If Africa is not my people, if America is not my people, then where am I? Home is where? This is not your country <coughs> and things like that. Mm. For me, I don't like to be treated as a foreigner, but this place is in Africa, but I don't want to go. Mm. Ethiopia is a place I can always call home. And how old you are? Yes. I'm 11, 12 years old. 12 years old. My name is Isaac Miller. I'm 18 years old. My name is Adam Rasquin Seb. I'm 13 years old. My name is Zion Danny. My name is Zion Danny. I'm 13 years old. 13 years old. Good. So, my first question is, are you all born as a Rasta? and you grew up in that culture? Or is it something that you you changed after a while? I hope you. We grew up as a Rasta. You grew up as a Rasta? Yes. I actually wasn't, I wasn't born into Rasta culture. I was, I was born Christian. Oh, okay. I was, I'm not from here, I'm from England. All right. But I, I, after, I grew into it. I grew into it, it was like a culture change. Okay. Yeah, I, I grew into it. I grew into it here as well, with my mom and my dad. So you grew up in the Rasta culture? Yeah. Um, for you, Zion? I'm good. I grew into it. You're born as a Rasta? Yes. Do you have like any challenges living uh, as a Rasta, like as a Rasta, you, you know that Shashamane, there are many local peoples here and uh, you, growing up as a Rasta use, what are you, like the main challenges that you're facing in everyday life, for example, in terms of cultural expression, it could be maybe because you have dreadlocks or it could be the way you eat because there is a certain ideology of Rasta, what are the challenges? Anyone can start, no problem. Okay. Um, for me, there's this type of image of, there's an image of a Rasta which is supposed to have dreads. And for me, the I've grown up in a country where you, whatever you, what type of hairstyle you want, you can have. And for me, it's like people always like, you don't have dreads, are you? You're not Rasta because you don't have dreads. But for me to be Rasta, I don't need dreads to symbolize the fact that I'm Rasta. I am Rasta within heart. Mm -hmm. Me? The, the, uh, when I have the dread, sometimes people cuss you because you got the dread. If you see, that's a mop on your head. Things like that. There's a what, sorry? Mop. Mop on your head. Yeah. Like, so they tease you. Yeah. Where do you face that? Like, balls in your around your neighborhood, in school? No, in school. Okay, and for you, hi Hoja? The same thing. That's what you face. Mm -hmm. Zion? Me? <laughs> they don't, because I'm Rasta, <gasps> the teachers don't really like, like how I act. The teachers do what? Like how I act. He doesn't like or he like? He, he doesn't. Okay. Can I just add on this? Yeah, like, please. And in school, the, in school there's another problem. It's because it's like a lot of Ethiopians know the history of His Majesty in Ethiopia. So the problem they come to face between me is you're worshiping a person. Why are you? Why do you worship a person? God, Haile Selassie is not God. When he was in Ethiopia, when he was king of Ethiopia, so many people died. He killed so many people. He is Satan. But they don't, they don't, they don't take the time to understand the reason why. Mm -hmm. Before I never knew why, but now from my dad's explanation, I get to understand it. We don't worship the flesh. We worship the spirit. It is Jesus Christ's spirit with inside of him. But they don't understand that. They just built on. He killed so many people. So many people died. So they say, why are you worshiping a person, and especially a person who is very bad? They don't understand that, and they don't take time to understand that. So that's the main problem I seem to face. So that's like that goes in terms of your face, yeah. related to your face. <laughs> Do you integrate well with the locals? Yeah. 
like having Ethiopian friends, you know, who are not Rasta far. I, yeah, I have, I have a lot of Ethiopian friends and they're not Rasta, but <laughs> they like the ideal of Rasta. They like, they kind of, they enjoy it. Like when there's Rasta celebrations, they come on. Some come for the free food, but mm -hmm. others just come for, you know, the fact that it's Rasta. Okay, so there are some conscious, but most. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's the same under, same understanding uh, with their parents, for example? Do you think their parents will mingle? What about like your parents? Your parents, do they mingle well with the neighborhood, like with the locals? My parents mingle well with the locals, but then there, can't, there comes a time when there's a problem because the parents, the children are brought up from the same understanding that the parents are brought up on, which is His Majesty was a bad person. He killed so many people when His Majesty was alive. Ethiopia was such a bad country. So now the children are learning from the parents. So my parents don't mingle with a lot of Ethiopians because it's like all they go, all they do is try to tease, take, they try to run joke on the fact that we worship in His Majesty. But there are some Ethiopians, as I said, that are into are into the rest of into the rest of worshiping of the rest of our so mm -hmm. they have certain people that they that they mingle with cool. uh, you can show me maybe Ada like yeah me uh, if, if you mingle with you know uh, me my parents mingle with the neighbors because my mom is Ethiopian mm -hmm. so because of that and my we speak a mark so that's why they are friendly uh, so both some, yeah, you, you have some, friends and your parents have Ethiopian friends as yeah, well. But some uh, neighbors are jealous too. Like the why? We have in the big yard we have things like that. Yeah. The Ethiopians yeah. are jealous because you have je that land. Yeah. They have a land too. Yeah. Why are they jealous? Because most they think like, hey, that you come with this not your country <coughs> and things like that. You shouldn't have this big yard and we have a small yard and you got a big yard. Because you got money, you, be, you buy a big yard mm. and things like that, they're jealous of that. Just, so, and they express it? Yeah. It's not necessarily to do with wrestling, but it's to do with coming from foreign and being having Jamaican parents or having parents that come from England. Whereas another problem is I face is, I don't know Adam if you get this problem, but because my parents aren't from here, <laughs> they expect me to be rich, they expect my pocket to be full of money. And it's like, although my house my house, I don't have a lot of money, but we keep ourselves looking nice. Mm -hmm. Like even though we don't have money, we show, we make it look as if we do. So they expect us to be rich. And that's like, Ethiopia, which is why me and Ethiopians don't get on a lot, is because they expect me to have money. And when they start to see that I don't have money, they start to see, what's going on with me? Because I have no money. And it's like, why, they get jealous because I come in with, I come in with shoes where they wear sandals. Mm -hmm. I wear jeans when they wear their shorts. Mm. I go out and eat. I'm, I always bring lunch where some don't eat lunch. Mm. I will have, like, I will be sent to school with money when some don't get money. They get jealous. The most thing is when you go to the shop, mm. sometimes when they see you have dread or when you see that you're a raster, they put up the money. On exactly, yeah. The, 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 what they expect, they yeah. ask you for money. They yeah, put like up the for price. For example, if the price oh. is 200, they okay. put it up to 300 or things like that. Not mm. realizing that. Well, I may not speak the language perfectly, like these lot speak the language amazingly, but I may not speak it amazingly, but I'm not stupid to know that this is this, this is that, because my parents tell me, this is 50 baht I'm sending you, so they send me with 50 baht. So for you to give me 60 baht, I must know that you're putting up the price baht. For me, I don't like to be treated as a foreigner, because in England, I'm a foreigner. Over here, I'm a foreigner. In America, I'm a foreigner. So where will I be one? Where will I be? A, where where are my people? If I have no people in England, if England aren't my people, if Africa is not my people, if America is not my people, then where am I? God created me with a people. I have ancestors. Gun, they don't. Over here, they don't read their history. If they were to read their history, they'd understand that. Okay, I may have come from foreign, but I'm not a foreigner. You just don't know. They don't teach in over here in Ethiopia. They're teaching. They're teaching foreign history. So they will never learn their own history. If they don't teach their own history, they will never be able to move forward. They will always be, they will just stay stuck where they are. Yeah, yeah. Africa. would you like to say something on this? Like, what are your problems, the challenges you fear with your 
friends in like as a rasta person do you have a problem to mingle to have keeping friends how are you treated and how also your parents do they mingle do they have Ethiopian neighbors do they mingle with their neighbors yes they, they fight over the, the land. They fight over what? The land. Yeah. What do they say? Huh? What, what, what do they say? Well, what is the fight about? They be saying what thief and corn and thing. Sorry? They be saying what thief and corn. Your thief. Yeah. That's what they say. What, what they say? Yeah, we thief corn from the That's what they say. Zion, would you like to say something? Yes. <laughs> in our class, they spoil us. Rasta is thief. They said uh, Rasta is thief for devils. Rasta is thief. And the devils. And devil. Why? Because of the land again or? No. The and because most of the Rasta is small ganja, they're like, oh, they believe in, in Obia and things like that. It is another thing to do with what Ayuja is said about the land is they don't like the fact that the land, His Majesty left land first so mm. that when we repatriate, we have somewhere to facilitate ourselves, we have somewhere to live. They don't like that. So a lot of Ethiopians fight. From what I've seen since I've been here, I haven't personally experienced it, but from what I've seen since I've been here, Ethiopians like to take stuff that is, take land that is given to us. They like to trick us into giving land over mm. because they don't like the fact that land was given to us and it was given to us by his majesty and they don't like his majesty they try to acknowledge every good thing he done so now if there is still land here people will still recognize his majesty and everything he's done after he's gone and another thing to what adam said about the weed about mm -hmm. the, the marijuana ritual, is, okay. they don't they don't like it they they see that in foreign they portray the ganja as being bad not realizing that it's actually helpful because it's medical and they give it medical as in England they give it medical mm. but they say it's bad they say why is it your dick bad it's nasty it's gonna kill you and another thing is over here over here they like to talk a lot of what like we as Rastaf as Rastafarians as Jamaicans mainly and my dad's Jamaican mm -hmm. they taught the patwa and here they like to talk the patwa they like to start with they like to start with peace, just being nice, greetings. Then they like to finish it with cussing, not realizing that if they cuss, finish it with a cussing, they're taking back everything they said. Like they hear, they hear rest of people cussing on the road, not knowing what it means but because they've heard it. They pick it up and go and say it, not realizing that what they're saying is inappropriate, but they don't understand. It's because they don't understand through the patois or they know that it's really a cursing word. They don't, some don't, some because they don't understand the full meaning of the patois and some because they know the meaning of the patois. Some know the meaning of the patois so they decide, okay, I can cuss as much as I want and then after I'm Ethiopian I can say I never understood but it doesn't work like that. Mm -hmm. And especially because of uh, for the, about the ganja, they don't want to tell the people that the ganja is a medicine because they want to get money from the hospital. The hospital wants to get money by their own chemical. They don't want to tell the people mm -hmm. to get ganja because people going to start growing ganja. Then it's going to be like... Mm. That's what. Uh, okay, so there's one thing also I would like to raise is, you know that like your parents when they repatriate to Ethiopia, it's one is mainly because the emperor's call and invitation to all black diasporas who contributed to the <coughs> independence of Ethiopia actually. Uh, so he made this invitation and then actually it was the Rasta people who responded to that call and then since ever since 1960 or 1950 you know like small small they start to repatriate now my question is now maybe you're born here or not but as of now you're living here uh, do you think that dream of your parents to repatriate here and to call africa home and specifically ethiopia 
because the emperor is from Ethiopia. Do you think that dream is shared by this generation? Yeah. Mm. My, well, my dad's, I, my dad felt for years that he was, um, that Africa is where he wanted to be. Africa is the place. But, and then after I was like a couple, like a couple of years after I was born, he then repatriated. But, and uh, his dream is now shared because his dream was, his dream was to have a place for his children. So that when his children come to Ethiopia, they have somewhere they can call home, somewhere they can stay. They don't have to stay in the hotel, they can stay in something which is theirs. Which is why my dad tries his best to make sure that everything is set for when we, when we all repatriate. So to have me here, I think is really special for him because he wants to have the children so he can strengthen himself and strengthen them at the same. But I see a lot of people repatriate to Ethiopia and then go back to England because the expectations of what they expect, people, people, they don't come, and a lot of people don't come to Ethiopia because it's portrayed as having disease, mm -hmm. famine, food, and hunger. Is it, there's no food, people are starving, mm -hmm. people have diseases and stuff like that, which is why a lot of people don't repatriate, and people that do repatriate end up leaving back because their expectations of what they came is not different. It's a lot different. And plus, people in America don't want them to come, so they've been telling them that it's farming, the whole place is farming, and people like outside think we're farming because on the news, that's what they hear that people in Ethiopia is dying because farming and people is giving up money because we're poor. So people don't want to go to the poor place, they want to go to the higher place. That's why. Would you like to add something, I hope so? Okay, so uh, I'll just strengthen this question. So now, given you have given me the answer, okay, like what, how your parents came and uh, what kind of visions they have for you here. But you, as a Rasta youth, would you continue sharing this dream? Do you call it your Piaho or you, all, you, you want to leave? What, based on, you know, your challenge, the experience you had here? For me, I wouldn't mind to leave, but Ethiopia is a place I can always call home because home is where you always go back to. So whether I was to leave or where I was to stay, even if I leave, Ethiopia is somewhere I go back to. But I want to prove Ethiopia wrong because they have the mindset that we don't speak the language naturally. We don't read or write the language naturally. So therefore we can't do anything as good as Ethiopians. So my mindset is, I want to prove them that just because I don't read or write the language, I don't speak the language as good as them, it doesn't mean I can't do it as good as them. Because I, have a, I had a brother, mm -hmm. he came first in the national exams in grade 12, and he actually ended up going, he, he could have went to university in Addis Ababa. Mm -hmm. So for me, for me, that is a, that's my motivator. That's mm -hmm. someone I look up to because when they said he couldn't, he did. When they said he wouldn't, he did. Mm -hmm. When they said he could never do anything, he did. He proved them wrong, so I want to prove them wrong too. Adam. <laughs> so, like, if you... Would you, like, this is... Okay, I know that, like, you, your mother is Ethiopian, but your dad come from uh, the Caribbean. How do you view yourself when you grow up? You still continue to call Ethiopia home, or...? Yeah. I don't want to leave nowhere. No way. Maybe I want to go to Kenya and t spaces in Africa, but I don't want to go. Out. Not outside of Africa. <laughs> Good. Zaya. I want to stay home. You're gonna, you're gonna stay home. Home is where? Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Yeah. And this is where you want to be. Yes. I hold ya. I want to be in Ethiopia. Thank you very much. That was very enlightening and really emotional for me.